This is version 2.0 of my video. I took out some things, I added some things. Watch the whole thing. Welcome. In this video, we're gonna go step by step, even if you know nothing about cryptocurrency, if you're a complete noob, if you never handled a computer before, how to mint your first NFT as a digital artist. Now, let me give you an outline of this video because this is a really long video. If there's a certain part that you're most interested in, you can skip to it but I really recommend you watch the whole video. And yes, there's going to be some stuff at the end that you don't want to miss. Part one is gonna be, who exactly is this video for? So I'm gonna put the timestamp below. You can skip it if you don't feel the need to look through it, but I think it's worth listening to. Part two is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to, how to mint your first piece. You know, how to get the wallets, how to get the currencies, how to set up everything, basically. Part three is going to be a walkthrough. So basically, I show you on the computer how to mint your piece once you have everything set up. The final part are going to be lessons I learned along the way, and I really recommend you don't skip this part because I screwed up a lot many times, and in fact, it cost me a few times. So I definitely think you should learn from my mistakes and save yourself both time, money, and frustration. There's actually different networks that you can sell your work on. This video focuses on the Ethereum blockchain, and that's actually where the, the big bucks are at the moment, but you're also spending big bucks. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I think I spent more than a grand already on just minting and gas fees, which is kind of crazy, because I started doing this with only $200, and I'm already at that point. But if you, for example, have a little money to work with or if you are really really concerned about like co2 and things like that even though i've already made videos dispelling those kind of things there's two different uh networks that you can look into first is the tesos blockchain uh the minting fees there are very low and they have very little emissions to worry about so if you're like a very environmentally conscious person and if you have little money to work with look into the Tesos blockchain. I'm going to be making videos about that in the future. Also, there is one called Wax. I have friends doing Wax. They're doing really well on there. And the good thing about these two is that there's like very little competition. So you can actually get into the Wax and Tesos blockchains and I can make videos about them later. So keep that in mind if, for example, Ethereum is a little bit too pricey for you. So part one, who is this video for? It's are for anyone working with digital media. I'm still not sure about traditional artists, but perhaps you can scan your work and actually sell it in that manner. With NFTs, the possibilities are endless as I've been coming to learn these days. But anyways, this video is for digital artists, whether a musician, uh, someone drawing, a photographer such as myself, really, if you create some kind of digital medium or not, this is for you. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Now, who is this video not for? This is for people who just wanna cash in, make a quick buck, not really artists. They're just people trying, looking to get money because if you go into this, you're not even an artist, you're just trying to make money, you're probably going to lose money. And I'm going to explain more on that later. So before we get into this, I want you to understand that NFTs are an investment, you know, it takes money to get started and some of the bigger platforms you actually have to apply. So you should have like a portfolio ready. I applied to some where they actually required like a artist resume. So I went back and actually created a resume, which I'm very proud for, by the way. Some of these also require video introductions. So they have like specific instructions. Uh, there's many websites, but there's also like NFT platforms or nifty platforms where Anyone can go in there and start selling, but you know, it's all dependent on the quality of your work. So there's different caveats. I wanted to add some things who this video is for and who it is not for. First of all, I don't think NFTs are for everyone. Not everyone's going to succeed. You have to understand that this is an investment. I want to think all of you as being adults. You know, you put on your big boy pants, you might win some money, you might make some money, but you could also lose some money. So 
If you are not confident that you can promote your work on social media, if you're not confident making videos of yourself to apply to these bigger platforms, if you don't have $200 to spare, and if you're not confident, if you're not confident in your work that it's going to sell, if you're just in it for the short term, you're not in it for the long term, then you probably should not be wasting your time with NFTs. I know that's a very controversial thing to say. Many people are putting out this idea that anyone can do it. And yes, anyone can do it. But if you're not the kind of person who is going to bring value to your own artwork, who cannot promote themselves, who doesn't use social media or Twitter, and who doesn't plan on doing this in the long term, you probably should not do this. There's reasons why you should choose one platform over another, which I'm going to cover later in this video in the last section. Okay, so now we're moving on to part two. This is the step-by-step -step baby holding. If you've never worked with cryptocurrency, if you really barely know how to use the internet, this is for you. Step one, you're going to need a digital wallet. This is where you're going to store your currency. This is where you're gonna get paid and this is where you're going to be making payments from. Now it's actually not that difficult. Uh, there's many different wallets, but if you're a complete beginner like me, I recommend you start with MetaMask. MetaMask is actually the way you sign into many of these websites. So many of the major nifty platforms, they use MetaMask as a way to sign in. So you basically sign in with your wallet. So just search Google for MetaMask. You're going to, you can install it on your computer as a plugin. You're going to get your uh, your wallet code. So that's the number right under the wallet. Uh, that's your address to getting paid. So don't type the wrong code whenever you make payments or whenever you receive payments. And first thing you're gonna notice is that you start with no money. So how do you get cryptocurrency? That's, uh, that's number two. So in order to get started with nifties and minting, you need to get some cryptocurrency. And this is going to differ from different countries. Some countries that you do it from the bank. I heard in America, even PayPal lets you transfer cryptocurrency to your uh, digital wallet. But there are some websites online where you can connect them to your bank or you can pay with credit card and they'll take your money and convert it to the cryptocurrency of your choice. I'm gonna tell you the three easiest ones I know. And the most popular one is Coinbase because Coinbase can be uh, directly uh, connected to your bank. But the nice thing about Coinbase is that it's just really simple to use. It's like, it's kind of like MetaMask. It's just very streamlined and not as difficult as other things out there. Uh, you might wanna do some more research into the different places where you can buy different coins because some of them just have better perks than others. Some of them cost less than others. But if you're a complete beginner, Coinbase is the place to go. There's also eToro, E-T-O-R-O, and uh, CoinMama. Those are like the three I can think of on top of my head. But there's actually so many more. Like, well, depending on your country, you might have different websites. But those three are like the easiest ones with Coinbase being the one you should look into. So you're going to go to Coinbase. You're going to make an account. You can uh, buy coins with PayPal there. You can use uh, your credit card or you can just connect it to your bank account. Now there is another way. If you don't want to go through all these uh, connections, like in Korea, I can't buy as a foreigner any coins or I can't convert it into Korean won or from Korean won. Then you can just find a friend who uses cryptocurrency and be like, hey, can you lend me some crypto so I can get started? Basically a crypto loan. So you give your friend your, uh, your wallet address and they can send you money and, uh, or you can just pay them cash. You know what, you guys work it out. You know, you can give them PayPal, you can give them cash, just uh, borrow some coin from a friend. Or if you're part of the Nifty community already, there's already lots of people out there willing to help artists get started. But I personally don't really like doing that. I just, I don't like, I don't like borrowing, but that's just me. No, it's maybe leave it like a last resort. Okay. Now you, you might be wondering now how much money should you deposit or how much money should you get? And this is really completely subjective, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you to get around 200 to 250 bucks because reasons. Um, 
as you're going to see later in this video there when it comes to minting and uh, it costs it costs money it costs money to mint it also costs money to make transactions to get paid or to make payments this is called gas like every time you do something you gotta pay a little bit of gas and it may not seem like a lot but it adds up over time so do yourself a favor because every time you buy coins you're paying a tax or a fee so you want to get as many as you possible as many as you need so that you don't have to buy any more later down in the future right so i would suggest getting around 250 bucks worth of uh, ethereum uh, that's the main one that people use on these nifty websites okay so now let's get to the platforms you have your wallet hopefully you got some coin either from a friend or you bought it from one of these websites you have around 200 250 which is perfect remember this is an investment not for everybody there's going to be a lot of people trying to make a quick buck but they're probably going to lose it anyways there's a great deal of platforms dealing with nifties there are so many big ones for example nifty gateway super rare known origin foundation actually there's another way to get into this one you can get an invite uh, ephemera is great for photographers i know there's many photographers watching this website and uh, there's actually one platform being developed going to be exclusively for photographers which is another reason why i'm making this video on this channel so I look forward to that now these big ones and there's many more I wanted to add a little bit to the artists who work with traditional media. I've seen traditional media artists succeed on, on nifties and the way they do it is they evolve with their work. Some of them have been scanning their own work and not only are they scanning their work, they're learning things like animation. So they're learning to animate their own artwork to add an extra layer of dimensionality to it and they're able to sell it. Other artists are taking a picture of their work, they're posting it, and then they include like a physical item with it. So like what I did in my case was people would buy my pictures and I would send them a copy of my book or a copy of my prints. This is to entice them. So if you're an artist in phys doing physical stuff, you can actually do this technique and I think it works quite well. They actually require you to apply. And there are so many great, so many great talented artists applying these days. It's like a big flood. And luckily I applied before some of these websites uh, close the application submissions, but it can take some time. It can take anywhere from weeks. It can take days. It can take months. Who knows? But the biggest one of all of these is probably Nifty Gateway and Super Rare. So expect some competition and uh, apply if you're confident you're going to join. I don't want to discourage anyone from applying to these. Now about these websites, since you do applications, they do look into your work. Like if you have a portfolio, if you have like an Instagram, a Twitter, like if you have a collection of works and a following, it's going to help you so much more. Uh, but if you don't, don't worry because there's other websites you can use. For example, Rarible, OpenSea, and Mintable. Mintable is actually kind of cool because people can actually pay with a credit card there. So uh, that's like a new one that's coming around. But anyways, today I'm going to focus on Rarible and OpenSea. Both have their perks and at the same time both don't. But I started with OpenSea. I put four of my pictures up maybe last week. And today, just before making this video, I sold my last piece. So, fantastic. Okay, so now let's say you chose the website you wanted to go to. You maybe apply to all of these big websites. Uh, you still can't sell on there because you have to be um, accepted. Uh, foundation is great because they are doing like an invite. So if you know someone in Foundation, maybe they can give you an invite. So be sure to check on that. But let's say you're just starting out. Let's say you're going to start on either OpenSea or Rarible. I want to talk about these two platforms because they're kind of different, but also kind of the same. You're going to go to OpenSea or Rarible or both, and you're going to create your profile. Please be sure to include your banner because uh, I actually submitted for verification once and I didn't have a picture banner, so I got rejected. But you can apply again. It just takes a few days. 
But anyways, let's talk about OpenSea first. See, the most alluring thing about OpenSea is that you only got to pay the minting price the first time. After you mint one piece, you can keep minting more and more pieces for free. That's like the most wonderful part about it. But there you still have to worry about gas. Uh, gas, uh, gas prices change just like regular gas prices. You know, gas prices are what the uh, cryptocurrency world runs on, right? So I'll go back. I'll go into gas later. But it basically comes down to this: when you mint a piece on one of these websites, you're going to pay a minting fee, and you're going to pay a gas fee. And in OpenSea, you only got to pay for minting the piece one time and the gas. And that's basically it. So that's great if you're just starting off and you don't have a lot of money. But the downside to OpenSeas is that people cannot see your work until you are verified. That means it doesn't show up in the website. People can't search for it. The only way people are going to see your work on OpenSea if you're not verified yet, which can take a week or more, is if you share the link on social media like Twitter or Instagram or Discord. Uh, these nifty communities have a, many of them have a Discord. You can go in there and you can share your works. So if you've been like me, that's been working the social media for years, uh, that actually use Twitter because many people don't use Twitter, then you'll find that the nifty community there is massive. You know, there's collectors, there's people who sell their works. It's wonderful. If you're going to be successful with nifties, get yourself used to using Twitter. And if you don't have a Twitter account, you probably use it. Now, the other one is uh, Rarible. Actually, the great thing about Rarible is anyone can just go in there and start selling. But it also means that there's going to be lots of great work to look through and lots of junk, basically. So it's I think it's a little harder to get on on. I think it's a little hard to get seen on Rarible, but at the same time, there's more people using Rarible than OpenSea. That's my feeling. And it's good to know that people are going to actually see your work and hopefully uh, buy from you. So in today's video, we're going to do an example from Rarible. But the downside is that every time you mint a piece, you're going to have to pay a minting price. Whereas OpenSea is you only have to pay once and then the rest are free. So. Choose carefully which one. Uh, the first time I did open seas for my first four photos. And this time we're going to mint one on Rarible because uh, we're slowly moving up. Okay, so I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to posting on Rarible. And the great thing is that most of this applies to open seas as well. They're all very, very similar. So here's we're, here we are logged in. We're just going to go to create. You can create multiple or single. Uh, so you want to sell more than one, but I want to sell just single. Now, all you have to do is fill in this information. Now, I actually had a video where I sold this picture. And the funny thing is, at one minute after posting this, it sold out. So you might not believe me, but it happened. And I accidentally erased that video. So we're going to just make an example with this. We're not actually going to post it, but we're going to choose this file. There you go. It's going to give you a preview. You're go you can put it at an instant price. Like you can put it as a bid, but if you put it as a bid, you have to pay gas when you want to accept the bid. So we're going to put it up for sale. You can set it as an instant price, right? And here you can choose your price, however much you want to sell it. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to re recommend setting it for too high your first time. Uh, you might want to start with your lesser works and then make your way up. That's kind of my strategy. But you also don't want to set it for too cheap because it costs money to to mint and to pay the gas. So I'm just going to put, um, for example, 0.15 Ethereum. No, that's 224 bucks. So it's really up to you, whatever price you want to go, but not too low. Now, let's just put point one. You can also include links here. So once people purchase, they can actually redeem this link or file. Now, I have here OneDrive. 
all of my files like I have them uh, by folder for example this is a, the piece I already sold I would uh, get the link and I would put the link here that way they can download the super high risk file even though they can download it here already I want them to be able to go somewhere and download it anytime they want for themselves so uh, let's just say I posted the link here just like that and then you can choose uh, whether you want to get paid in ERC7 or you can also earn Rari tokens. So in this case, we're going to go for Rari tokens. You want to include the name. Now, we're not actually going to sell this one. It's just an example. You want to include a description. And this is very important because, you know, as a collector, you want something with a story. Like if you want... If you want to sell your picture, you want to make sure there's something meaningful behind your picture, not just selling it for the sake of selling it and trying to get cash. So let me talk about this picture, for example. This is uh, my book cover. So I'm, I'm letting them know exactly what's going on, but you have to tell them something deeper because this is actually a very special photo for me. It's the same photo I use for my blacklight prints. I might want to include that here. It's the same photo I use for my book cover. I definitely include that here and uh, basically let them know about the picture, right? Now, the great thing about Nifties is that you can set your royalties. That is, if someone buys your photo and then they decide to sell the photo later, you can get 10% uh, of that sale for life. That means every time someone sells your photo, you're getting 10%. Now, you could do more if you want, but I, I like the standard 10%. For properties, you want to uh, just uh, tell me about the picture, like tell me location, for example, so South Korea, all right? A size, what is this? So this one's 1920 by 1080. Uh, this is just an example, right? It's not really, uh, what else? A medium, digital photography. And maybe you want to include the minting date. Minting date. Today is like March. 7 2021 okay so then from here all you do is click create your wallet is going to pop up right here it needs your signature you just click sign and then you just go back and forth every time it says sign you click sign and that's it that's really it there's nothing else to it i mean you're going to have to pay the minting fee and some gas that's it, promise. So we're talking about platforms. I've had some experience on the different kinds of platforms already. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's different advice I would give to different kind of artists. For example, if you're like a true beginner, I would recommend you start with open seas because you can list a piece and then it's free from there. You can also do rareable. But once you've established yourself a bit more, and I don't want to say myself as being established, I'm just saying once I've gone to a higher level, then you're going to kind of want to distance yourself away from open seas and rareable. And this is just the advice that the collectors I've spoken to have given to me because the open seas is kind of like the Amazon of nifties and collectors want the premium stuff you know if if you have you they want you to hold value because your value holds value for their arts you're an investment to them so now that i've gone beyond open seas and rareable by the way one of them told me that rareable is kind of like a shit show <laughs> well i did pretty well on there i think many people are doing well but they kind of tend to stay away from rareable because there's like a lot of copyright infringement stuff which is another thing i'm going to get into later but once you've gotten a certain level, you want to stay on the more established uh, platforms like Foundation or Known Origin, Nifty Gateway, Super Rare. So once you get to that level, you want to stay there and kind of distance yourself slowly from the other ones. Even though personally, I love Open Seas because that uh, free minting is awesome. This is just my advice to give you if you reach that level. Another thing that I learned about these platforms is... Uh, for example, Foundation is great for one-on-ones, but they don't really do anything to promote you. Like, you have to promote yourself. 
uh, you got to understand this nifty stuff. It's all you. You're the one doing all the work. It's not just I'm going to load something. I'm going to get rich. It's you are going to be on the forums. You're going to be on the Discord. You're going to be on the Twitter, the Facebook groups, putting out your work, talking to people, making connections. If you don't do those kind of things, then it doesn't matter if you're on foundation because no one's going to find your work. Uh, I, li I really, 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 really love known origin. Um, but I like them because you can, they actually share my work, they actually tweet my work, and they actually put me on their Instagram and their stories. And Foundation doesn't really do that. They just kind of promote the same people over and over again, which is one of the criticisms they get. But the great thing about Known Origin is that they let you do editions. Editions are where you can sell more than one piece. So uh, originally I tried going five editions, five copies of one image. And that worked really extremely well for me. So I, I tried experimenting. I did 10, but actually that didn't do so much well. I think collectors value rarity. And when you're doing these things, you want to think as a collector and you want to bring value to your collectors. So I think either I'm going to go one-on-ones on foundation and I'll go fives on known origin. And this is what's working for me so far. I'm using Ephemera. But I found out that not so many people are on there, even though it's like the more photography centered one. You can also use Bitsky. Bitsky uses like a um, monthly fee to load your work, which sounds like I don't want to pay a monthly fee. But when you consider that minting a piece can cost like over 100 bucks, then maybe it's kind of a good thing to do like a one time subscription to, Bit to Bitsky. All right, so Bitsky is great for like video and photo also. I see a lot of people are pros on it. There's also Mintable. Mintable is like really kind of attraction. I wouldn't say it's like a up there with foundation or anything, but a lot of people are using it because you can use your credit card. And that's kind of a big thing. Now, I've heard lots of questions in the original video. What about if you're a writer? What about if you do short stories? What if, you, what if you're doing like poetry by voice? then Zora is the one you want to look at. So a lot of people are using Zora. And of course, I mentioned earlier about the Tesos and the um, Wax blockchain. So you can actually look forward to those videos in the future. Okay, great. So you made it to the final parts of this video. And actually, I think this is one of the most important parts because I learned lots of these lessons the hard way. And I want to share these things with you because nobody taught me these. These are things I kind of just learned by myself. And actually, I'll take that back. Some of them, some friends did tell me. But some of these, I learned the hard way. For example, when you use OpenSea, since your work is not going to be showing up until you get verified, you need to uh, start putting up your work like on social media, where it's Twitter or Instagram or whatever other social media you use. You might be surprised that there's actually more people out there in the nifty community than you think. Uh, kind of like, um, like I was surprised when I first started with this nifty stuff. It's like a third of my Twitter was already doing it. and I had no idea. Like all these people just started coming out of the woodworks. So don't be afraid to put your works out there. Just don't shill too hard. Like you want to put it out there, but you don't want to be annoying about it. So that's my first tip for you. Um, share it in social media. And if you're not on social media, you should probably get on Twitter and Discord. Um, for Discord, many of these nifty websites have their own Discords. So you can go in there, you can introduce yourself, you can talk to people. They have like a place called Show Your Work where you can post your works. And collectors actually go in there and take a look. So if you're worried that you're not getting eyeballs on your work, you definitely are getting eyeballs. You just have to put yourself out there a bit more. So yeah, it's a whole new world out there uh, that I basically had no idea existed. I can tell you right now, this cryptocurrency nifty stuff moves very fast. I've made more connections in the past two weeks than I have in the past 10 years of my life uh, doing photography the traditional way, you know, like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, like the whole, they are the gatekeepers. But when it comes to like nifties, there are no gatekeepers. I can tell you this. When it comes to nifties and the community, followers aren't really so much of an issue. Like whenever I try to make collabs with like bigger YouTubers or Instagrammers or 
Twitter, people just kind of look down on you if you don't have the same follower count. And they only, people only want to do collabs with people with higher uh, follower counts than you. But the great thing about the Nifty communities is that they're so artist-centered and artist-focused that people are willing to collab with you if your work speaks for itself. Like even if you don't have like a huge following, but you have, then they're willing to work with you. I'm going to do a collab with uh, DJ Burn One. Uh, he he does some scoring for some of like the movie traders. He's even doing the scoring for like. Well, that's kind of crazy, right? And he he does this work with like all these really big people. I can't believe he's gonna collab with me. Like wow, that's that's amazing. That's just that's crazy. It's insane. But anyways, that's the great thing about Nifties is you can collab with all these creators who they just want to create. You know okay let's talk about gas prices now the thing about gas prices just like regular gas prices is that they go up and down every time you do a transaction uh, on the um, blockchain you have to pay some gas and sometimes the gas is really damn high and sometimes the gas is really low so you have to check these websites to see when is the best time to uh, to post your work, you know. For example, gasnow.org is the one I use. I am always checking the Ethereum. I'm always checking the gas prices there. If it's ever around 60 or below or 70 or below, then that's when I go in there. That's when I take the money or that's when I mint some pieces because I don't want to be paying a high fee every time I uh, do these transactions. But the first time I actually made a mistake, uh, I accepted a bid and the gas was like 150. I ended up paying a lot of money for that. And I didn't realize that until actually after I did the transaction. And I was like, oh. So I learned my lesson. It's not a big deal. Just go to gasnow.org. When you see the chart is down below 60, 70, go there, mint your piece. You'll be golden. If you are minting your piece, you're going to get asked the option to either buy outs or bid. If you choose buyouts option and you set your price, then you don't have to pay gas to get paid. But I put my first three pieces on bid and people bid and bid. And when I finally accepted the bid, I had to pay gas to, to get the money, you know? And I was like, oh crap, I don't have any money in my, uh, my Ethereum wallet, you know, in my MetaMask. So, I had to go and get more coin, you know, and it, it kind of sucks because when you get more coin, you got to pay more, more monies and your fees. So you're actually losing some money there. But anyways, that's why I told you at the beginning of this video, get like 200 or 250 bucks. So you have uh, coins to do these other transactions, not just minting, but you need to have some, some uh, coins to um, accept cash or to do these kind of transactions so basically leave some money in your wallet uh, don't just spend it all ah we should really talk about how you should price your pieces at this point because this is not one lesson for me i had some guidance from a friend who told me when i put my works i should not sell myself short because originally my whole plan was to make at least one dollar profit you probably saw that video and i was going to i was going to price them at that point and she basically convinced me, your work is worth much more than that. You should price it much more. And I'm glad I did. Because if I had priced my works too low, I would not have made back the money that I spent in it. Because remember, you are paying a mint price. It could be like 40 or 50 bucks. You're paying gas, which could easily go up to like 10 bucks. So that's already $60 investment. Let's say you have a picture and you're going to put it for like $10. So you're basically paying 60 bucks to get $10 back. You're losing $50 at that point. So I, I was going through these websites and some of them had pieces that were going for like a dollar or $2. I think they were beginners like me, but they're not going to get any of that money back. In fact, they lost a lot of money. So when you go in there, make sure you're going to get enough money back for how much you're going to spend and enough so that you can continue minting more pieces in the future. So don't sell yourself short. Another thing I didn't know 
uh, when I used OpenSeas, I got paid in W Ether. So when I got the money in my wallet, I was like, why do I have two wallets? Like there's Ether and there's W Ether. I thought they're the same. They're not the same. And I actually didn't have any, um, I was going to exchange that W Ether into Ether, Ethereum. But you know, you gotta pay gas to do that too, right? You gotta, you gotta pay the fees. And I didn't have enough for those fees. So that's, that's when I got more money, right? I had to buy some more money so I could actually do that. But the point I'm trying to say is, the, where I want to get to is, if you're going to be collecting all these uh, different coins, you might not want to transform into Ethereum right away. You might want to build them up a little. So let's say you get like 500 in W Ether, then you can change them into Ethereum, but you get, oh, here's one payment of W Ether. Okay, I'm gonna change it into Ethereum. And here's another one. Okay, I'm gonna change it into Ethereum. You're losing money every time you do that. So it's better if you do these transactions when you have a lot of money than into doing into multiple transactions because all those little costs are going to add up. Yeah, so basically don't do multiple exchanges. Uh, keep the money there and then exchange it once you have enough that you feel comfortable doing it. And the last point I, the last point I wanna get to is how to actually sell your work. Like I mentioned, I have a good social media following. I use Twitter, I use the Discord, I use the Instagram, I use all of these. But one thing I didn't really like seeing is all the shilling that goes on. And I do get it, cause like at the very beginning, I did a little shilling myself, but that's cause I thought that's what you were supposed to do. But then actually I felt kind of dirty cause I don't even like doing that on YouTube. I don't even like doing these catchy titles, but that's the way you get people's attention. But what I saw on Twitter was like all these art collectors, and all these like people new to NFT just flocking to the art collectors be like, me, me, buy my work, show me and linking their work to their, to their profile. And I did that once. I feel sorry for that, but you know, it said right there, link your work. I want to check out new works and okay, I'll do that. But after that, I didn't want to do it again. But maybe a few days later, I saw one person, one art collector and he said, he, he had enough because people were like flooding his messages and DMs and just trying to sell his work to him like me, me, me. And he said something along the lines of don't try to sell your work to me. If, you're good, if your work is good enough, I'm going to notice you. And that kind of reaffirmed my suspicions that all of these people are just trying to make the buck or just annoying the art collectors. And probably the art collectors are like, I don't want to... I don't want to look at them because they're just trying to show their work at me. They just think I'm just some kind of cash dispenser, right? So uh, it's kind of a fine line. You got to put your work out there, but you don't want to be like, me, 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 look at me, buy my work. Why, why won't you look at me, you know? And, you know, that's why I'm telling you to join the Discord and Twitter because they have dedicated places where it says, uh, dedicated channels where you can put your work there and our collectors can go in there and take a look if they feel like it. I want to add a little bit more to the lessons learned because like one of the things you quickly come to notice is that these fees add up. You have to pay a fee every time you do a transaction. And one mistake I've noticed people doing is that every time they get paid, they quickly go to the bank, they pay that transactions, they pay the gas fees to get their money right away. But the way I'm doing things is I'm getting these transactions, I'm saving them up uh, in my wallet. And then once I get to like a certain amount, then I'll deposit them into like the bank or something. Cause you know, every time you go do a transaction, you're paying a gas fee. So it just makes sense to pay less gas fees by doing less transactions. You should be watching the gas. Um, you want to mint when the gas is low. You want to do your transactions when the gas is low. And above all, you want to promote your works when the gas is low because nobody wants to be buying work when the gas fees are really, really high. So it's, it'd be a really big mistake for you to go to Twitter and Instagram and promote your work when gas is like around 200. You're just kind of wasting your time. So it's better to wait when gas is really low and then you can mint your work. You have a much higher probability of success. I guarantee it. Also, when your works do sell, you want to claim your Ethereum when the gas is low. Uh, sometimes you might wait a few days, but it's better in the long run, I think, but maybe not wait too long.
because you want to you want to be considerate of your collector. I wanted to create this section because I've learned so much over the last few days. So many people just want just are just in it for the money. You know, I've always considered myself an artist. I've been calling myself an artist for a few years now instead of photographer. And there is a big difference between I don't want to have sound like I have a big ego, but like myself and many of the people, many of the masses you see trying to sell their work. Uh, for one, you have to think as a collector. Uh, and actually, I learned this from listening to like the Mad Dog Jones. Uh, they were doing this clubhouse and he made a really awesome point. He prioritizes his collectors above all because, yes, some of these collectors buy art because they love art. But also many of them, they're buying your art because you're an investment. They're buying your art because they, they think that you might have value in the future and that you might they might be able to sell your art for even more. Which is great because you know when they sell when people sell your art you get a commission you get a cut, ten uh, percent right. So, what are collectors looking for? To for you to be successful, first I think it's consistency. Uh, I think character is very important. If you look like someone who's going to be in the space for the long run, for example, me I've been doing social media stuff for years and I feel right at home with Nifty. So I'm. I'm going guns blazing, doing all kinds of projects, collaborations, and I think people are starting to take notice of my work. So they want people who they want to buy works from people that they think are going to be along around for a long run. If you're just in it for like a quick buck, they're probably going to glance over you. And I think that's very important to note. Second of all, I've seen so many people creating artworks with copyrighted material, and you know, maybe legality whether or not that's legal or not uh, i don't really want to get into that but you want to i want you to think of it as a collector do you want to purchase a piece of someone who has like mickey mouse or like mcdonald's on the artwork you know something that's potentially legal liability and the answer is no now there is an exception someone told me what about people he people did this well you know what you're not people i'm not people we cannot compare ourselves to people, right? That guy's on his own wavelength. But ignoring the copyright legal stuff, just consider the mind of a collector. They want to avoid this kind of negative risk to uh, buying artwork that's possibly illegal, you know? So just keep that in mind. I think in the end, it all comes down to creating value for your collector i mean everything you do everything you say in social media has a reflection on you if you just have the appearance of someone who's just shilling all the time 24 7 uh, then they're probably not going to want to buy your work because your work's just going down if you are putting out nft after nft after nft if you're doing like editions of 100 200 300 then your value is going to diminish so much that people are not going to want to buy your work at all like so far, I've been doing mostly one of ones. I've done final fives. I actually went into open seas and burned some of my images that were not selling and that were like five of fives, tens out of tens, because I want my, my work to hold value. And uh, this is something I've now come to accept. You don't want to mint so many things at the same time. I did that my first time around because I gas was like 200 for the longest time. And I finally saw a dip under 100 and I made the mistake of, oh, I'm going to mint all this stuff right now while I can. Because now you have all these artworks on your page and it looks like nobody's buying them. And then when collectors see that nobody's buying these works, they're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't buy them either. But when they see all these works are sold out and you have one there that isn't sold out, that's like a psychological thing. They're going to want to buy that, right? So that's another tip I wanted to give to you. Hmm, lessons learned. Also, you want to get to know your collectors. Like, uh, I'm not a very social person, but I am what you would consider like a social media butterfly. Like, I always talk to people, even people who are rude and mean to me. I usually tend to reply to them kindly. People talk to me in DMs. I just make conversation with them. Uh, people on the YouTube comments, 
you want to engage with the community. You want to retweet, you want to share work, you want to comment on their work. Don't just go in there and drop your, your work under someone's like tweet or something. That's not going to work. That's going to make you look very bad. Like I'm in some of these YouTube, Facebook pages and like I'll, I'll write out a question like, hey, what do you all think of this, blah, blah, blah. And then like 100 people will just, no, maybe not 100, like 20, 10, 20 people will just drop their artwork under my link. That shit's annoying. Uh, collectors see that. So you got to remember like collectors are people too, you know. Um, they're going to buy your work based on many things but also are you just like treating them like an atm machine or you're like actually treating them like a hum decent human person like there's one person i'm not gonna mention but i've been talking to him on discord for like maybe a few weeks i had no idea he was a collector <laughs> he just kind of started buying my stuff and i was like wait a minute you you buying my stuff and i, I didn't know like, i was just talking to him because i thought he's always oh, someone wants to talk to me you know so you never know, you might be pleasantly surprised. Um, one person ended up buying one of my pieces for like three Ethereum. Like That's a lot. And you know, when I saw his profile, I didn't really think much of it. I was like, oh, yeah, he wants to talk. Maybe he wants to buy one of the smaller pieces. And we just started talking. He asked some questions and I replied. I treated him with decency, respect. I didn't demand or show my work at him right away. And then he just surprised me with like buying this piece. So you got to remember... You are your own representative. You are selling your own work. And if you're just like out there for the money, you're probably not going to do very well. You're probably not going to last very long. If you do sell something, you just have to be a decent person and you got to be part of the community. Like my, be my way of being part of the community is talking to people, is going to the disco rooms, chatting up with everybody, just being there. I don't even show my work in them anymore. I did at the beginning, that was a mistake, but now I make these YouTube videos to help people and it's my way of helping others. So if you found these videos useful, find me on Twitter. I'm always happy to help. And of course, I'm going to make more videos. I'm going to be exploring the Tesos and the wax chain stuff as well. And I'm going to be making more of these tips later. And uh, these are all the lessons I've learned so far. The hardest one being to have extra money to make the transaction, to accept money. You need money to accept money, you know? Uh, nothing's free in this world. So I hope this video was super useful. I think it's like 30 minutes long already. It's going to be like 40 minute video, but hopefully we covered everything. Anyways, subscribe. I'll see you around.